नमस्कार वेलकम टू यूनिट सिक्स डिस्क्राइबिंग अ मोन्यूमेंट द ताज महल नाउ लेट एस बिगिन विद द ऑब्जेक्टिव द एम ऑफ दिस यूनिट इज टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ अ मोन्यूमेंट शुड बी डिस्क्राइब टू टूरिस्ट दैट इज द रोल ऑफ अ गाइड इन एक्सप्लेनिंग अ हिस्टोरिकल मोन्यूमेंट नो बेटर एग्जाम्पल कैन बी ऑफर्ड टू एलिस्ट्रेट दिस रोल देन द ताज महल एट आगरा हैंस वी गिव यू इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन the architectural details of taj mahal the genesis of the scheme to build taj mahal and the details of its construction some interesting references to taj mahal in the historical literature and some anecdotes concerning taj mahal all these details will equip you to describe the monument and motive more tourists to pay a visit to it let's begin with the introduction taj mahal is india's star tourist attraction It is also World Heritage Monument. This white marble mausoleum commemorating Mumtaz Mahal, the beloved queen of Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, is an unparalleled beauty among all the historical monuments of India. As a guide, you will always find the tourist falling under the magic spell of Taj Mahal. You should therefore strive to prolong this sentiment and also give them enough reason to pay repeat visits. we have given you in this unit details pertaining to taj mahal's architecture and history some anecdotal information as also the perceptions of taj mahal in european minds have also been discussed here this we hope will be utilized by you in improving your description of the monument and thus enhancing your clientele what we have discussed in this unit should be taken as an example of describing any monument as per its history architecture and other details now the facts on taj mahal few people know that the name taj mahal was given to this mausoleum by european travelers in this contemporary chronicles it was known as the illuminated tomb rizai manavra and was built between 1632 and 1643 if we go through the plan of the taj which can be described as follow the taj is situated on a raised platform at the southern end of the four quartered garden the locality in which taj mahal is situated in the agra city is known as mumtazabad after the queen mumtaz mahal taj complex has been designed on grid pattern beginning from north the first composition is a red sandstone forecourt known as chokelao khana in chronicles it was intended for the royal reunited next is a 30 meter high red sandstone gateway through which one enters the garden complex on which the main building the taj mahal is located through the gate entry is made to a four part garden divided into quadrangles by waterways they meet in the center in a large tank the model of this garden is the mythical garden of paradise the northern end of this garden has the taj mahal western flank of taj is a mosque in red sandstone and eastern flank is its replis in the center of the platform is taj mahal with each corner having gone four storied marble minaret if we talk about the stylistic detail besides the plan and the layout a good guide must know the stylistic details of the monument being described in the case of taj these are taj is planned on the pattern of humayun's tomb it is a trimurid in style the exterior is white marble with a sparing use of inlay work in colored stones quarantic verses in black calligraphy are inlaid on the marble surface the main mausoleum is octagonal and contains in the center the grave of muntaz mahal shah jahan's grave is by the side of the central grave Originally the graves were surrounded by a golden screen designed by Shah Jahan's goldsmith Bibadul Khan later for the fear of theft or loot it was replaced by Shah Jahan with a carved and latticed marble screen moving further to the decoration every monument has certain decorative aspects which should be brought to the knowledge of tourists or the visitors For example the decorative device envisaged for Taj Mahal gives a prominent place to the play of the light on the marble surface of the structure 
on the lower portions of the structure there are carved floral panels above these panels are a series of floral motifs inlaid colored stones main flowers depicted there are narcissus roses and tulips these are the flowers which have been used in persian mystic poetry to describe the features of the beloved the carvings and inlaid patterns have been designed in such manner as to give prominence to the white marble surface rather than overshadowing it if we look into the cost visitors to the taj often ask about its cost or how much money was spent on it by shah jahan guides also make all kinds of assumption in estimating the cost of taj mahal no absolute figure is able to give an exact idea of the importance of this building project a good guide will make this clear he can give the comparative figures like for the building projects of shah jahan excluding of course the jama masjid delhi we get an absolute figure via 2 and 1/2 crores of rupees the taj mahal accounted for nearly 20% of this expenditure that is 50 lakhs of rupees any detailed break up of this expenditure as also the construction procedures have been missing from the accounts of contemporary or near contemporary chroniclers next is the genesis and the execution of the scheme taj mahal is the mausoleum built by shah jahan to commemorate his second wife mumtaz mahal here we are giving you an account of the genesis of the scheme of taj mahal and its execution mumtaz mahal Mumtaz Mahal was the daughter of Asaf Khan and the granddaughter of Jahangir's Prime Minister Itimdad ul Daula. She was born in April 1593 and was thus only a year and a quarter younger to Shah Jahan. The marriage of Shah Jahan to Mumtaz Mahal was settled in 1607 but could only be ceremonized nearly 5 years later in 1612. In a meanwhile in 1609 Shah Jahan was married to the daughter of Muzaffar Hussain Mirza his third wife was the granddaughter of Abdul Rahim Khan Mumtaz Mahal was Shah Jahan's dear most queen she gave birth to 14 children out of which only 7 survived she died in childbirth in 1631 at Burhanpur where her body was temporarily inherited in a garden called Zainabad across the river tapti it seems shah jahan soon decided to give a final burial to her deceased queen at agra and built a memorial building of unparalleled beauty on the grave the foundation of taj mahal was laid in january 1632 the site chosen for building the mausoleum was originally occupied by a misson by raja man singh it was therefore given for the mausoleum in return for a larger property by his grandson raja jay singh after the final burial of the body a small dome building was raised over the grave until the construction of the grand mausoleum started if we talk about the architect and the architect of architecture of the taj mahal it was built by ustad ahmed he was the main architect of taj mahal a native of lahore who was awarded by the title of nadirul asar that is wonder of the age by shah jahan he worked on taj mahal under the supervision of makramat khan and mir abdul karim the two government officials until 1930 it wrongly believed that either the italian craftsman jeronimo vovenko or the french goldsmith augustin de burdin designed the taj mahal In 1937 the scholars came across a text called Diwani Mubdis containing a collections of poem written by Ustad Sons Liftullah mention of Ustad Ahmed as the architect of Taj Mahal is found in this text the supply of marble for Taj Mahal was made from the quarries at the Makrana and ensured by Raja Jai Singh under imperial orders if we uh, go through the details of the calligrapher the floral motifs the geometrical designs and the calligraphy are the three prominent decorative features of taj mahal the most interesting of these however is the calligraphy we get interesting details on it from the chronicles the calligrapher was amanat khan but this was his title his name was abdul haq and he was a native of shiran his elder brother was mullil shukrallah better known as afzal khan 
Amanat Khan was appointed calligrapher of Taj Mahal in the middle of 1632. His calligraphic designs were transformed into the surface of Taj Mahal sometimes around the end of 1633 or the beginning of 1634. His signature may be seen at two places in the calligraphic bands on Taj Mahal. There are three other extant inscriptions bearing Amanat Khan's signature via Getaway of Sikandara, Madarsa Shahi Mosque in Agra city and Sari Amanat Khan near Lahore. If we move forward and understand the details of the garden, Taj Mahal defies the most usual plan of Mughal mausoleums of locating the dead, the centre of a square garden. Taj Mahal stands at the end of a rectangular garden. The garden is a massive land measuring 540 meters by 300 meters. A canal runs in the centre of the garden north to south and divides it into two halves. These halves are further divided into quadrants by the canal branching in east-west direction. The garden once had beautiful trees lined with the canals. The quadrants have today been decorated with trees which expresses a sense of serenity befitting the nature of mausoleum. Near the western end of the colonnade adjoining the entrance gate, there is a small museum having interesting exhibits on Taj Mahal. Let's move further and understand the Taj Mahal and its history. Taj Mahal as Raza e Munamwara, the illuminated tomb, has been amply described in history. We have selected for you the description of Taj Mahal as given by Shah Jahan's celebrate court chronicles. Abdul Hamid Lahori in Patshah Nama and the descriptions by European travellers. Moving on to a contemporary account, here is a description given by Lahori. It has been taken from Taj Mahal, the illuminated tomb, which is an anthology of 17th century documentary sources compiled and translated by W. E. Bigier and Z. A. Desai, published by the University of Washington Press, London in 1989. On the account of the construction of the sacred tomb, foundation and plinth, at the beginning of the fifth year of the exiled accession in January 1632, the excavation was started for the laying of the foundation, Buniari, for his subline edifice which is situated overlooking the Jamuna river flowing adjacent to the north. And when the spade wielders with robust arms and hands, strong as teak, had with unceasing effort excavated down to the water table, the ingenious Missons, Benayans and the architects Myamaran of astonishing achievements most firmly built the foundations, Asas, with stone and mortar up to the level of the ground, Sathe Zameen. And on the top of this foundation, there was a raised kind of platform, Chabutra Asa, of brick and a mortar in one solid block, Yak Takht, measuring 374 cubits or zira, long by 140 wide and 16 meter high to serve as the plinth or the khursi of this exiled mausoleum. And from all parts of the empire, there were assembled great numbers of skilled stone cutters, lapidaries, and inlayers, each one an expert in his art, who commenced work along with other craftsmen. The exposed sides of this plinth were faced with dressed slabs of red sandstones, so smoothly cut and joined by expert craftsmanship that even close inspection fails to reveal any cracks between them. And the floor of the plinth was also paved with the same red stone. In the middle of this platform plinth which ranks with the heavenly throne of God, Another solid and level platform, 120 cubits square and 7 meters high, faced entirely with white marbles, Sangi Marmar, in the center of the second platform. The building or the imarat of the heaven lofty and paradise like mausoleum was constructed on the plan of Baghdadi octagon, Tara e Musamman e Baghdadi. 70 cubits in diameter on a base plinth, Khursi, 1 cubit is height. Situated in the exact center of the building, the domed hall, Ganbad, over the spectral uh, margad of that recipient of divine grace has been finished with white marble within and without. 
from the floor to the curvature the hall under the dome is octagonal in shape with a diameter of 22 cubits the curvature is ornamented with mukamas motifs while from the cornice to the inner summit of the dome which is at the height of 32 yards from the floor of the building there are arranged marble slabs cut in a geometric molded pattern and above this inner dome which is radiant like the hearts of angles has been raised another heaven touching a guava shaped dome to discover the minute mathematical degrees of which would confound even the celestial geometrician. Crowning this dome of heavenly rank, the circumference of whole outer grid is 110 yards. There have been affixed a golden finnel 11 yards high glittering like a sun with its summit rising to the total height of 107 yards above the ground. In the center of the tomb lies the divinely grazed grave or the mazia of that leader of holy women and paragon of the pious who occupies the reclining couch of the highest heaven and the chief seat in the loveliest missions and is enshrined in divine mercy and pardon and enveloped in divine absolution and pleasure. On the floor above the actual grave or the turbat of that resident of paradise there stands a marble platform Chabutra on which a cenotaph surat e gab has been raised and surrounding this is an octagonal latticed screen which is highly polished and arid pure made of that very stone the wonderful inlay workmanship of which will be presently described with an entrance fashion of jasper after the turkish fashion joined with glided fasteners the cost of which was 10000 rupees in the interior of this earth like structures gold enameled constellational knobs and hanging lamps shine forth and all that of four arches of this heaven like dome gave dome have been cased with Aleppo glass leaving in one of them a doorway for coming and going. At the corners of the white marble platform which is 23 yards high above the level of the ground stands four minarets also of marble with interior staircases and capped by cupolas which are 7 cubits in diameter and rise to the total 52 cubits from the pavement of the said platform to the final appearing as it were like ladders reaching towards the heaven. The pavement of the platform of this paradise like tomb is of white marble while the floor inside the tomb has been paved in utmost beauty and delicacy with interlocking white marble and black stones which as it were outshine day and nights. All over the interior and exterior structure of this mausoleum, wonder working and magic making artisans have inlaid carnelian and other kinds of colored and precious stones, the jewels of whose description cannot be contained in the capacity of narration, and the pearls of whose praises, the balance of the tongue, cannot be weighed whose luster causes the sun to be resplendent and whose splendor causes the word illuminating dawn to be bright faced in such a way that the most discreening eye cannot fathom its subtitleness and the most perspicuous imagination fail to comprehend its wonders. And in accounts both of the quality and the quantity of this artistic skills which have been employed in the inlay of the work of the grace platform and the failing ground it the reflection of whose wonderful design causes the eye of the sun to be embellished and the skirt of this fair to blossom like spring and the miracle which the magic working carvers and the artisans of many like achievements have wrought could never be finished and completed even with the pens of trees and inks of oceans. Let's understand the Europeans perception. The description of Taj Mahal from the pens of European travellers are quite interesting. Though they do not add anything substantial to our knowledge of facts on Taj Mahal, they are significant as perception of people from an alien culture. The earliest mention with the reference to Taj Mahal is by Peter Mundi, an agent of English East India Company. He was in Agra up to the beginning of March 1632 and was a witness of the beginning of the construction work on the Taj Mahal. The two other off-quoted accounts are by Jean Baptiste 
Tevenier and Francoisio Bernier, both were French travellers and reached India after the construction work had reached an advanced stage. Both were awestruck by the beauty of Taj Mahal. Bernier thought Taj ought to have been included in the list of wonders of the world. Now, there are lots of anecdotes also associated with the Taj. Taj Mahal has given birth to more anecdotal stories than other monuments in India. Such stories do not obviously become part of uh, the repertoire of the history, yet they possess a spicy effect and may be used as the fables. We may have listed for you some of the more common anecdotes that have tried to account for their genesis. The first one is Taj Mahal built over a period of 22 years. Local guides, obviously uninformed, would invariably cite existence of 22 small domical chhatris atop the entrance gate to the Taj complex as signifies the years consumed in its construction. You must, however, know that there is no truth in this statement as Taj took only 11 years to complete between 1632 to 1643. Probably the legend of 22 years originated from the statement to the same effect of Tavenier. Lately, the ingenuity of the local guides made them discover 22 of these domical structures atop the gate. Second myth is, after the completion of Taj Mahal, Shah Jahan ordered that the hands of all the masons who have worked on it be severed so that they would not be able to repeat another construction of similar beauty. There is, however, no historical evidence to such act and any suggestion of it is nowhere written and even to the remotest possibility of such an act does not seem to be possible. Third myth is, Mumtaz Mahal wished at the time of her death that her memory be perpetuated in the form of an edifice of unparalleled beauty. The fact, however, is that the edifice was entirely Shah Jahan's conception. Mumtaz's death's wish as recorded in history was that her child and her mother be looked after by the emperor. Shah Jahan began to build his own tomb on the other side of the river Yumuna, but the project was interrupted due to the war of the succession. There is, however, no mention of such a project in history. Probably the story of duplicate building got circulated from Trevenier's similar remark. Let's move ahead and understand what is for the conservation of Taj Mahal we are doing. The surface of this beautiful marble mausoleum is under pollution threat. It's a common heading in newspapers and magazines and whenever environment in India is under discussion. You may therefore anticipate questions from the tourists regarding the impact of environment pollution on Taj. We strongly recommend you to get hold of material on this debate from some past issues of news features, magazines or newspapers and acquaint yourself with adequate information. Probably, it would not be possible for you to take strong sides on this issue, but this should enable you to place arguments in favour and against the environmental pollution to Taj Mahal. The problem of conservation came into limelight after the approval of setting up of petroleum refinery at Mathura was given by the Government of India. Several studies conducted in this regard came up with the conclusion that the refinery was not a threat to the health of Taj Mahal. Recently, however, Supreme Court worded asking the UP government to shift foundry factories from Agra to a distant place so as to safeguard the Taj Mahal and has lived in the issues. Now, let's sum up. As a tourist guide, you got adequate information on Taj Mahal in this unit. We gave you details on the plan, architectural style and the decoration of Taj Mahal. We also gave you information on the genesis of the scheme of Taj Mahal and its construction. Some historical references pertaining to Taj Mahal were given to enrich your bag of knowledge about Taj Mahal. Popular anecdotes regarding Taj Mahal and sub-information on conservation of Taj Mahal were also formed part of the details. We are hopefully find yourself in a better position now as a guide taking tourists to Taj Mahal. At the same time, by using this unit as a sample, you can gather information about the monuments in your area and subsequently describe them to the tourist. Thank you for viewing.